Yeah, they wore those underdress. You know when, look, that happened in the 1980s. That started in the 80s, when women started wearing spandex out in public. This truth must be pushed throughout the state of South Carolina by all means necessary. Our people are in desperate need of God's laws out here. We're the men to stand boldly to get the job done against all opposition that standeth in our way. And opposition will come. In fact, it's already here. Every day we put our lives on the line to save our people. And that's even in the midst of all the opposition that come our way. But this is our mission. It doesn't matter how we feel or what we think. We all have our own issues, but who's going to rise up when the Most High calls? It's time to gather the saints from Columbia to Spartanburg, Charleston to Myrtle Beach. We hit the streets for the lost sheep. So men of war, gather yourselves together. Let's get ready for battle. Strap your boots, no excuse, let's push this troop. Whether it's two by two or the whole crew, get ready. We're coming through. We are not a hate group. We are not affiliated with any other Israelite group. Israel, united in Christ, is a non-violent, Bible-based movement. IUIC. Period. And he hates God. That's right. Do you think the white man actually loves God? Watch this. Remember, these are the children of God. These are the children of God. Let me ask you something. If you walked up and smacked a child of God in his face, and God saw you do that to one of his children, what do you think God would do to you? Well, imagine if you was an other nation. Imagine you was white and you came and slapped one of God's children. What do you think God would plan on doing to you? What would you do, if, exactly? What would you do if you see somebody smack your child? Oh, I'm, I'm, they gonna... You finna say, they gonna say it off, ain't yeah, they? they yeah, you already off. doing your hair. <laughs> you already pulling it back. That thought, means, that thought alone made you say, no, nah, nigga, it's finna be on in here. <laughs> I saw it. See, that's your reaction. You know what you gonna do. So you gotta think. This is what they did to God's children. This can't be them loving God. Right. This has to be they hate God with a passion. Right. Because they did this to his children. You already sat there and ready to set things out. <laughs> knowing what the, if somebody touched your child, God right now is setting the way he's being patient. You know what he's being patient on? He's waiting on 144,000 men to sit there and be a carbon copy of his son, and then he's going to bring the white man down to his knees. That's right. He's going to bring this whole country down to his knees. Watch this. Give me Psalms 83. Psalms 83 and verse 1. Keep not thou silent, O God. Hold not thy peace. Hold not thy what? Hold not thy peace. David has said, please, Lord, <laughs> don't hold back your peace. Don't hold back your peace. Guess what? We saying the same thing. That's Please, right. Lord, don't hold back your peace. That's Bring judgment on these nations. That's right. You understand? Bring judgment on these nations for what they did to our forefathers, what they continue to do to us today. We said, come on, Lord. When will, this, when will you bring judgment on these nations? You understand? Watch this. And be not still, O God. For lo, thy enemies, thy what? Thy enemies. God has enemies. But can they do something to God? But who can they do something to? His children, right, us. Read, make a tumult. And they, I'm sorry, and they that hate thee. They what? And they that hate thee. They, God is telling you that these other nations hate you. God is telling you that. It ain't the brothers in purple teaching hatred. We teaching the Bible. That's right. The Bible is telling you that these other nations hate you. And guess what? Love has an action. Well, here's their love. They don't love you. They love to oppress you. Right. They love to kill you. They love putting their foot on your neck. They love watching you be at the bottom. They don't want to see you rise and be in rulership. They want you at the bottom. They want to oppress you. They want you serving other gods. 
They want you to die. That's right. It's really that simple. That's right. They hate you. They don't love you. They hate your guts. They hate your name. And you know who else they hate? They hate the Son of God. That's right. They do. You know how you know they hate him? Because the Son of God looks like you. He said he was from the tribe of Judah. So that must mean he's a black man and they made him white. Right. That's how much they hated him. Right. Right. That's how much they hate him. They can't stand the image of him. So that means they can't stand the image of you. They don't want you to look like what God created you to be. Think about that, sis. Think about that for a second. What type of hair do you say Christ got? Woolly hair. If Christ was the greatest man that ever walked the earth, shouldn't we emulate that? Right. Shouldn't we do that? What color, what type of texture do you brothers got here? What type of texture is that? That's wool. What type of texture you got? Oh, this fake. That's my point. <laughs> That's fake. my point. They, remember, when I told you, if we don't come back to love ourselves, we'll teach our children to hate this themselves. The white man, listen, our parents didn't teach us who we are, and what they ended up doing was teaching us to love that white man there. Right. Because they told us that was Jesus. If that was Jesus, then the white man and the white woman must be the children of Jesus, or the children of God. And so we emulate them. We dye our hair blonde. We put perm in our hair. We dress like them. And we celebrate everything they celebrate. Yeah. What? Did we not just get through celebrating the 4th of July last month? Yeah. Well, this is, yeah, this is still August. What were we doing during the 4th of July? I, didn't do, I don't celebrate holidays. No, I'm saying what were we doing as a people when they got their independence? No, I'm talking about 1776. When they, that's when they started uh, celebrating the 4th of July, their Independence Day. So when they were celebrating their Independence Day on July 4th, 19, uh, 1776, we was doing this right here. You see that right there? We was picking cotton. Right. We was picking cotton, we was in the tobacco fields, and we was getting the, the, the whip on our back. Right. Our women was getting raped, our daughters was getting raped, and our men were getting oppressed. Right. That's what was going on during 1776 on July 4th for us. And now we sitting there celebrating their holidays. When God gave us holidays to remember by, remember him by. Right. You understand? And we don't follow those things. If we follow those things, it'll give us some pride back. Right. It'll give us our heritage back. And we'll start taking pride for who we are. That we are the Israelites. We are God's chosen people. Read that. For lo, thy enemies make a tumult. And they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. They don't took crafty counsel against God's people. You know how they you know how they're taking crafty counsel today? With television, media. Because they push this image all throughout the earth. Right. You understand? That media doesn't cover this right here. They don't right. cover God's right. children coming back to their true heritage. Right. They use their media to say that we're a hate group. Right. We're teaching our people to stop being whoremongers, to stop, stop killing each other, to stop selling drugs, to stop stealing, to come back to God's laws. We're teaching our people how to be great. And the white man said that's hate speech. The only thing hateful about that is it, hates, it hurts their spirit because their plan ain't working no more. The black man and black woman is waking it up. That's right. That's the only thing hateful about that. They hate to see us waking it up. Right. And they don't label it as a hate speech. And we got simple ass Negroes that don't forgot that the white man is our enemy. Right. And they believe anything that the white men say. Right. So when they see us out here teaching, they sit there and be so scared to come up and find out what other black men are talking about. Remember I told you, in slavery, they beat, the, they beat that bravery out of us. At least back in the 60s and 70s, the black man would stand up for the black woman. Not now. Now in 2023, the black man is scared to even stop two women from fighting. 
That's how weak the black man on became. He's scared to talk, stop two uh, women from fighting. He's scared to say, you know what? I got to get the hell off from on the bottom. I need to get up off my knees and stand up and be a man. I need to go get me a job. I need to stop being a bomb, hanging out in these streets, drinking all day, getting high all day, playing a video game all day. I need to be a man. It's a change going on in the earth. The black man should see it. How you doing, brother? Let me ask you a question. Do you see the change that's going on in this earth right now? Do you see the black man rising back up? You don't see it? Come and stand over here and you'll hear it. If you don't see it. Okay. Listen, hey, listen good. Hold on, sis. We got to give you something. We got to give you something. Remember, we ain't through. Read. For lo, thy enemies make a tumult. And they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people really? and have consulted against thy hidden ones. So they plotting against you, sis. They plotting on your destruction. They plotting to keep you from the knowledge of God. You understand? So we got to give you that knowledge of God so you can what? Overcome your enemy. Read. Verse 5. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. They said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. Because you just now learned that you what? Once an Israelite, you were from the tribe of Judah. So did they plan work? Yeah. They plan work. And it is working. Right, and then you know how it's still working? Because we're oblivious to who we really are. Because we're still in sin. Right. Do you know what sin is? Yes. What is sin? Sin is basically going against the rules of what God put out there for you to do. That's a good definition. That's a perfect definition. Well, we're going to read it from the Bible. Okay. How about that? First John chapter 3 and verse 4. Whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. The sin is the breaking of God's law, just like you said. So when God commands something, should we follow? Yes. Do you think we was following his commandments when this happened? No. That was the punishment. Do you think he had mercy on us? Yes, because he could have just wiped us all out. Yeah, right, right. right. <laughs> and guess what? He sacrificed his son now to bring you back to him. So we I look, so we had a disposition of time to be in this punishment that God put us in. How you doing, brother? You got time to hear the word of God? So God said, you know what, I'm gonna put y'all into slavery, right? So in this slavery. We will serve other gods. You understand? Did you know that? Yes. You do. We do. Right? We serving what? Christianity, right? Mm -hmm. Just and serving other gods. Right. Well, guess what? This Christianity taught you to break God's laws. It taught you to break God's laws. So you have to do what? You know what repent means? Yes. What does repent mean? Confess your sins and to be active. All right, all right, I hear what you're saying. Now watch this. I'm going to show you something. If I stole your thing right there, boom, I steal it. How would I repent? Drop to your knees. I mean, you're still standing there. You're still standing there. You what? Give it back. Oh, I have to give it back. Yeah. So if you was breaking a God's law, you have to what? Give it back. Stop breaking. Yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. But if I stole something, you have to give it back. Yeah. That's, that's repentance. So if you're breaking one of God's laws, you have to return, you have to stop breaking that law right mm -hmm. and go back to what god ordered you to do in the first place yes. right so i'm gonna give you a law right that you're breaking right now do you do you think that's love or you think that's hate if i give you a law that you're breaking it, would just be, it depends on what Watch the law it. is remember god has laws right what's the judgment for god's laws when you break them watch this romans 6 is 23. romans chapter 6 and verse 23 but the wages of sin is death so the payment for breaking God's law is what? Death. Death. So if I told you a law that you was breaking, you have an opportunity to do what? To repent. Mm -hmm. Would that be love? Yes. That's what it means to love God. That's what it means to love your neighbor. When you see your neighbor in sin and you come out and tell your people what they're doing that's breaking God's law, so they don't what, get put to death. Yes. Now, let me ask you something. Why would someone be offended by that? Right. I'm going to show you what love is. Watch this. Watch this. 
First John chapter 5 and verse 3. Do you know what love is according to the Bible? No, not according to the Bible. No. Hey, sis. Do you know what love is according to the Bible? You say yes. What is it? Come out and talk to us, sis. Oh, hold on. I want you to. I want. I want you to leave because remember, the wages of sin is what death. Yes. So I don't want you to die. So I want you to get this law before you leave. Okay. Because you're breaking it, and if God says that punishment, the sin that you're breaking right now, it'll keep you from the kingdom if you don't repent. Right. So we don't want you to miss out on the kingdom. So please just be a little patient. For this is the love of God that we keep His commandments. So to love God. You have to keep those commandments that he gave you. You understand? What's the opposite of love? Hate. We're showing hatred towards God right now because we don't keep his commandments. But we can return back to God with all our heart and soul by doing what? Coming back to those commandments. Here's a commandment that our women was taught and they didn't know that it was a sin. And this sin could keep our people from getting into the kingdom of heaven. If, but here's the thing it's up to the women to decide if they truly love God you understand because God is a God of action give me that first seven two or three before we get there because think about this right here can you just tell God you love him and he say you know what I believe you because you confessed it with your mouth it has to be actions behind it right watch this first Samuel chapter 2 and verse 3 Talk no more exceeding proudly. Because we talk exceedingly proudly how much we love God. We sit there and say, I die for the most high. I die for my children. I love God. We, we, we say all those things. We talk proudly, very proudly. Watch this. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. For the Lord is a God of knowledge. Uh -huh. And by him, actions are weighed. God is a God of knowledge. The knowledge he gave is the law, statute, and commandments. Right. You understand? And he said, I'm going to weigh your actions on your love. By you following and doing what he say, that's how I'm going to weigh your love for him. You understand that? That's kind of simple, ain't it? Deuteronomy 20, 25. Here's the law that you're breaking right now. And since you're probably breaking the law, but I can't tell. But here's the thing. 99% of our women break this law. Are you talking about how I'm dressed? Keep in mind, you're a princess of God. Do you believe that? A child of God, you're a princess. Yes. Right. So God gave his princes and his kings a dress code. Just like you give your children a dress code. How many what you got? I got one. One what? Daughter. You got one daughter. If your daughter called is yes. she seven years old. If she came in the house right now wearing some Timberland boots, hair on the back on the back of her head, with her pants sagging, showing her little underwear. What would you say? Uh, girl, what is wrong with you? Yeah, <laughs> what else would you do? Um, change her quickly. You're going to change her quickly because you what? You expect her, you expect better out of your daughter. Because you're raising her better. God said he expect more out of his children. Right. Because we don't want it away from God and we made this our God. And so we have to learn how to return back to God and follow his instructions. So we can walk in righteousness. Right. You understand? Watch it. Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So a woman shouldn't wear which pertain to men. Read. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Neither should men be wearing women's clothes. Because I guarantee you, if we were sitting up here with women's clothes, reading the Bible, you wouldn't have got out that car unless you had your phone out filming this. Saying, look at this madness right here. Okay. Right? Got, yeah, exactly. So God said, men shouldn't wear women's clothes. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. You know what abomination is? Something God hates. Right? Something God hates. And he said, women wearing men's clothes and men wearing women's clothes is an abomination. You can't get into the kingdom and why are you still in the midst of your abomination? That's why you have to repent and turn away from it. What is something that women wear that pertains to men? And what was another word for that? Pants. Pants. Women cannot wear pants. And they especially can't wear underwear. Do you know that spandex is underwear? No. You didn't know that? I didn't 
Sis, you older? Hey, sis. Shalom, Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right. I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. Yo. You didn't know that, sis? Let me ask you something. Hey, sis, let me ask you something. When you was growing up as a child, didn't they wear those under a dress? Under a dress. Yeah, they wore those under a dress. You know when, look, that happened in the 1980s. That started in the 80s when women started wearing spandex out in public. Salt and pepper. Salt and pepper. Salt and pepper. Oh, uh, you had you had those uh, singles, Olivia Newton John. Yep. Remember that? They start putting that in videos. Right. Like, watch them. Give me that Second Timothy two and nine. First Timothy chapter two and verse nine. In like manner also that the women adorn themselves in modest apparel. I said that the woman's supposed to adorn herself in modest apparel. You know what it means to uh, for, uh, to be modest. Not showing sexual attraction. A woman's supposed to be modest. She's not supposed to be having all her courage showing. That's supposed to be for her husband. And now, right. you, now you wonder why all men just want to hit it and quit. Right. Because we, why would we want our, every, every Negro out here looking at our woman? You know what I'm saying? Because all it's showing is her butt and it's showing her camel toe. Right. Why would I want that to be my wife? Ain't every nigga gonna be trying to hit at it? Ain't he looking fool? Ain't he disrespecting our women when they do that? They yeah, but they, they gonna look because you got it. It's a certain what. We look at our women because they're beautiful. We show respect when they show respect. Because when a woman got a dress on, you know what? We might see a man open the door for you. Come on, how you doing, sister? You know what I'm saying? He shows a woman a different respect. Right. But when we see that woman with them spandex on, them booty shorts on, them apple bottom jeans on, you sitting there saying, shit, I can hit that. Right. The man just gonna keep it 100% real with you. Right. And we, and you all know it. Cause they go to the club. First thing you do is do this right here and look in the mirror. What you looking at? You looking back at that butt to see if it's, the, is it, is it hit? Is it pop? Did right. it pop with them jeans on? Did it pop with them spandex on? Right. You see what I'm saying? It teaches our men to lust. Right. It causes our men to fall into sin. It causes our women to fall into whoredom. Right. You understand? It causes the men to be whoremongers. And you are daughter of the Most High God. Think about how God is looking down at his daughters right now. And think about it. What you got on, even though it's out of order, it's modest compared to some women nowadays. It is. I yeah, but guess what? Okay. No, God said, read it again. In First Timothy chapter two and verse nine, in like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. Read. With shamefacedness. With what? With shamefacedness. Our women ain't walking around shamefaced. You know what I'm saying? They want people to look at that butt. They want people to see the cleavage that they showing. That's why half of them don't even wear bras. Half of them don't even wear underwear. Right. They ain't got no shame faces. Right. Read. And sobriety. And sobriety. He don't want them running around being high and drunk all the time. All the black woman want to do is get turned up. She watches in the Negro now. She up in the club getting gin poured down on all over her now. Right. They pouring liquor all over yeah. now. Go but she through. acting like a hoe. This is what these celebrities is teaching our women. Right. They're going to be teaching your daughter if you don't teach her the laws and commandments. What is the nation? Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family. Nation is you.
foundation is you. And finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. His word.